are set on a Saturday night from the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center. It's Ontario Hockey League action as the Owen Sound Attack play host to the Kitchener Rangers. Mark McKelvey. We're into the final two weeks of the OHL regular season. The Owen Sound Attack still without that X beside their name in the stands, but they're getting closer to clinching a playoff spot. Right now, it isn't a case of if, it's more a case of when, but it's going to be a busy final two weeks for the attack, John, and they'll try and get it started on the right foot here tonight. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Facebook Live and our continuing coverage of Ontario's marquee standard bread racing events. Mark McKelvey joined tonight by Greg Gangle, and we'll also be joined in a moment by the third member of our broadcast crew, Jamie McDonald. Well, Greg, the Cam Luck Classic, it's one of those events you've always got circled on your calendar each and every racing season. The top of the Pacers are here tonight at the raceway for what promises to be an exciting race. So we'll have more on the first period a little later on in our intermission, but as Matt alluded to, time to take a look around the Ontario Hockey League. It's always busy on a Saturday, and we're getting into the home stretch, so it's time to find out what exactly is happening when it comes to the standings. And starting from the rail, number one is Ideal Jimmy, a six-year-old gelding trained by Irv Miller. Brent Holland will do the driving. This will be the first time that Ideal Jimmy has raced outside of the United States. He won three legs of the Levy before finishing fourth in the final. He missed almost all of 2018, basically a year off, and he's been firing this season. He's seven for 17. But the Generals get two in a row to cap off the period and have their first lead of the game. 4-3. to three. Let's take a look at the scoring summary and show you how we've got to this point. Denny Gore with his seventh of the year for the rookie at 3.30 from Nolan Seed. Got Owen Sound back in front 2-1. to one. Then Philip Tomasino gets sprung out of the penalty box. Ty Tulio fed it up to him at 10.55. 29th of the year for Tomasino and he wouldn't be done there. Igor Chibrikov would restore the lead just a minute later. His fifth of the year on a nice redirect with the rookies Burroughs and Gore helping out. Then Kyle McClain. He would score his seventh of the year as the captain of the general got left open in the slot and then with just 10 seconds left in the period Philip Tomasino would strike again and it was six minutes of power play time for the Kitchener Rangers that they were unable to score on and as we head towards the second period it's going to be the storm on the man advantage they still got 90 seconds to go and a penalty to Liam Howell so we're through 20 minutes second period is coming up you're watching Mark Wilson's better used cars Guelph Storm Hockey on Rogers TV so the Owen Sound attack, five different goal scorers, a 30 save shutout from Mac Gusta, and they prevail 5 0 over the Sarnia Sting. We're going to step aside when we come back. Post game reaction is coming your way. You're watching Owen Sound attack hockey on Rogers TV. As the Guelph Storm faced the adversity, down two men for a minute 25, the penalty killer stepped up huge. And then, when given their turn to go to the power play, they're able to strike just 10 seconds into a man advantage off the stick of Eric Yuba. He'll get the GWG. His 26th of the year at 1720 will be the game winner. Hey, coming up next, our second of four Breeders' Crown events here tonight at Woodbine Mohawk Park. It's the two-year-old pacing Phillies. We just saw an upset in the two-year-old Philly trot. The runner-up in that race was Sister Sledge. I'm joined by her trainer, Ron Burke. He sends out two in this upcoming race. Ron, quickly, uh, your thoughts on that performance from uh, Sister Sledge. Uh, again, another real good effort from her. Yeah, no, she didn't have the best week, actually, this week, and uh, that Ramona Hill came up huge. From your perspective behind the bench, uh, did you get the effort tonight that you were hoping to see and going up against one of the best teams in the league? Yeah, you know what? I think at times we did have that effort that we needed. But here you are tonight, and I've got to start first with Amigo Volo. Back-to-back -back starts where he has made a miscue. We were talking about it before we came on camera. Same issue that we saw in Lexington last week? Yeah, similar situation. He uh, gets a little claustrophobic. He had a horse outside of him. You come back here with your family. You've been to the Bayshore many times. You've stood on that bench uh, many times here in this building. But tonight, a little different. When you were coming into town, did it take you back to when you first came here for your first training camp? Well, exactly. Even the, uh, the article uh, I did with the, the paper. With the winners of the Battle of the Bells, Karma Sealster trainer Greg McNair, driver Doug McNair. Doug, I'll start with you first. Post position number eight. Going into this race, what were your thoughts, first of all, with your starting spot? And when we go into that first turn and Alley Corn goes off stride, were you aware and how did it change things for you? Yeah, you know, I, I kind of have a bit of an idea, you know. 
Time for your weekly edition of the Qualifier Report, and let's waste little time and jump right in and take a look back at three of this morning's winners. We'll start first with a debut from a two-year-old pacing colt named Sunshine and Shade. This is a Sunshine Beach colt going for the stable. James McDonald steering for trainer Mario Bayarjan, and you're gonna see him move out from third, and he is gonna get by in the lane to win in 158 and one. Final quarter, 27 and one. He actually gets by a some beach somewhere, two-year-old filly named Perfect Storm, who is also making her debut so a nice effort from her. Sunshine and Shade was an $18,000 Lexington Select purchase. Wins his debut again in 158 and one. That was just a quick look back at two of our nine qualifiers from this morning here at Mohawk Park. To see the replays in their entirety, head to youtube.com and look up Woodbine Replays. I don't know if it was as smooth a transition, but I also think that is in large part due to the position he plays and the expectations that come with being a defenseman in the Ontario Hockey League and just a young defenseman. Yes. He didn't have that seasoning that Barrett Kerwin had, and I think we saw some real glimpses of what Mark Woolley could bring to the table, and this year I think we've seen it on a much more consistent basis. You're not going to get that offense from him on the back end, but what you do get is a big bruising defenseman that strikes fear into his opponents. You certainly can. It's a picture-perfect afternoon here at Grand River Raceway, and I think as the minutes go by, it's only getting warmer out there. You can see lots of sun behind us. The track is lightning fast, and we expect to see the rookies blaze around this half-mile oval. And going into this season, they had their eyes locked on going right to the championship this year, and there was question marks all year whether Bodie Wild would come back. We'd heard the rumors for quite some time and I think ultimately the spirit were banking on this happening but they still went out made the big moves at the deadline and they have boosted this lineup wild coming in it's just going to make them all that much stronger and I do have them pegged as my Western Conference favorite all right, everybody, it's time now for our Doggy Derby Championship. We've got a great crowd forming here around the winner circle and out at our rail. But before we can have a race, we need to have a post parade. We need to meet the field for the Doggy Derby Championship. So we're going to go down the row here and we'll have one of the owners, the proud owners, introduce us to their dog. Okay, what is the crossover pick for? Well, it's a simple concept as it's going to feature two races from the Thoroughbreds at Woodbine Racetrack and two races from the Standardbreds here at Mohawk Park. It'll be every Friday evening and it'll be races six and seven on the Thoroughbred card before we shift things over here to Mohawk Park for races one and two. It's gonna bring the best of both worlds together. World-class racing of the Thoroughbreds and the Standardbreds presented here at Woodbine Entertainment and we can't wait to get things going. The Canadian Trotting Classic, $605,000 is up for grabs in that marquee event, which is one of four major stake races on a card with $2 million in purses. In the Canadian Trotting Classic, all eyes will be on Forbidden Trade as the hometown hero and Hamiltonian champion will be looking for another classic victory. Both of these drinks are going to be available on both nights of the Breeders' Crown Finals, October 25th and October 26th. So make sure to get your own official cocktail of the Breeders' Crown and to get it in one of these souvenirs your glasses to take home your memories from the event. It's all going down at the 2019 Breeders' Crown here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Welcome to Metro Pace Night here at Woodbine Mohawk Park and I'm pleased to be joined by Lindsay, a board member with the Milton District Hospital Foundation. Lindsay, welcome to Mohawk Park. Can you tell the viewers what brings you here tonight? Yes, thanks Mark. We are here tonight with the Milton District Hospital Foundation. So Cooper was raring to go and he did not disappoint. Congratulations to Cooper who is the winner of our inaugural Doggy Derby here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Thanks to everybody that came out. Thanks to all of our participants. We hope you had a great night. We hope you had a lot of fun. Still lots of great harness racing action coming up. In fact, up next, it is the Nassau Way of Stakes. So a lot of great racing. Stick around and thanks to everybody that came out. Once again, congratulations to Cooper. Let's hear it for our Doggy Derby champion. The wait is over. Let's meet the nine individuals and groups that have purchased a slot in the inaugural Mohawk Million. And we start first with a man that needs no introduction around these parts. He's won more races than any owner at Woodbine since 2016, award winner and Milton, Ontario's own Brad Grant. The inaugural Mohawk Million for a purse of one million US will take place on Saturday, September 26, right here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. It'll also be joined by the $850,000 Metro Pace for two-year-old pacers to put the two richest races in our sport for two-year-olds on the same card. Track the progress to the Mohawk Million by following our various social media accounts at Woodbine SB and use the official hashtag Mohawk Million. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially on the March to the Million.